episode three of the tesla transporter build so today we have with us chris from zero ev so when we decided to do this we were under no illusion that we could do it on our own we just don't have the technical knowledge and the understanding of electric vehicles yet so we started to look around for somebody to partner with us and help us do this whole project and the people that were the most obvious choice for us were zero ev um, you'll learn more about these guys as they go along you would have already well you're likely to have already seen some of their existing work they've done quite a lot of movie work which they're not really allowed to talk about but um, the thing that you probably have seen is they did some work on last series of top gear uh, where they uh, raced electric vehicles and they worked on the Subaru Ute I think, I think it was um, yeah they zero EV built all that for that and they've got some other stuff they're working on and lots of movie stuff and they're all over the place but yeah the guys are uh, as good as it gets in this field so uh, they were the people to come along and help us so Chris is here today laser scanning the underside of the vehicle we have two Tesla motors inside as well to work out where we're gonna put them and start fabricating brackets and stuff which I'll go and show you now Sunday again non-uniform day again Feel free to tag Craig Ritchie if any you like to hustle made. Uh, but yeah, I'll go and show you inside, see what they're up to. Right, so we have a couple of Tesla motors here. These are both out of a model, what did you say Chris, sorry, S. S. Yeah, so there's the larger one that would have been in the rear. So these can be capable of on the performance version, did you say? Is that what you called it? The sport version? Sport version 600 brake. 600 brake, and this is the small front one, which is about... Uh, 250. 253 so that will get us like we said previously close to a thousand brake all going well so this is Chris from Zero EV check out their channel they've got loads of cool videos so Chris has been scanning the underside of the engine bay that should give us a really accurate idea of where we can mount stuff and the dimensions and stuff so, so we can start fabricating some bits dry you, shampoo dry shampoo because we all need that because <laughs> we've, we've all got, got, loads, of hair, got yeah. loads of hair we're all feeling a bit greasy so uh, this is Mikey Say hi Mikey, hi. <laughs> you all know Mikey, cool, and, yeah. uh, and this is Neil. Hello. Neil's going to be working with us on this project, you'll see more of him as the time goes on. So these guys are currently sticking on little dots to help with the laser scan, it will just help the... What, why are they doing this Chris? Just... Uh, it's to give us reference points for the scanner, because everything's so similar under here, the scanner will probably lose its reference point as we go along, so the dots are sort of randomly scattered, just to give it points to pick up on so it knows where it is. Cool. as it scans so they just stick a load of these little dots on you can see here help the scanner pick it all up so it's given us an indication of where we can mount it within so large motor at the back here somewhere smaller motor at the front Chris has made it even more exciting by the idea that we can uh, look at potentially switching how the power works or turning off the front motor and we can turn this into a drift machine which made me smile This is the rear end scan. This is pretty much everything we need. There is some missing gaps because it just doesn't like how much the vehicle repeats underneath. But this gives us enough reference points to see where everything can be mounted. We've been on this a long time, haven't we? <laughs> time yeah, to get here. Ten, about 10 o'clock? Yeah. Time's it now. Just the so one. nearly 4 o'clock. A lot of work. Yes. Right, so the scans come through from Zero EV, uh, which Neon is tinkering with now. But this is going to help us work out exactly where we're going to mount the motor. It's already helped us realise that we can't do what we hoped we would be able to do and put a small motor in the front just because of placement and where the, the diff's going to sit. Um, and moving over to the vehicle. So we now have a large Tesla Model S motor in the front here. This is pretty much where we think it's going to sit and it fits really nice and snug once you get it past the subframe. Um, so we just need to work out how we can mount it to the original mounting points. Um, but originally we hoped we'd be able to get away with putting a smaller Model S motor here just because of cost and space but it just doesn't work with the where the diff sits in relation to where we need the dry shafts to be and then moving on to the rear which we thought would be the easy bit isn't because when you mount the large motor here it sits with only what was it 10 cent yeah 10 cent to me it's 100 mil from the road at standard height and that's at standard height and we obviously want to lower this thing quite considerably for for error reasons so we're gonna have to tub the rear the plus side is we get to use two large motors which will give us that a thousand brake horse no problem or potentially more um but the downside is it's going to cost a little bit more 
and um, they're slightly harder to come by the large motors but um, from a retail point of view when we start to offer these as a conversion there is no real reason to need to put a rear motor in we'd just be looking at using the front motor to go here so that was the whole idea of this exercise was to use this build as um, the information we needed to work out how to offer this as a retail option but yeah this thing's got a week or so on the ramp in the in the coming week so we're going to end this video here we're going to keep it nice and short in other news the charge has been installed so a and a electrical in loughborough did this for us last week so we've gone for the 22 kilowatt so the quicker charger system isn't really needed like your home chargers i think a seven kilowatt but we've gone for the more powerful one um just to charge it quicker so if you're in the area and you need some electric stop by we'll sort you out so a few other updates so like i said before this video is going to be relatively short and um, we've got loads of exciting stuff coming from the forge motor group forge motorsport guys um, i've just been talking to them just now we'll go through that in the next episode the next episode we've got a week of the vehicle on the ramp so loads of cutting work loads of chopping work loads of mounting work uh, working our way through some of the coding so it'll be a lot more interesting we thought we'd keep this video nice and short so we can really focus on uh, that in the next video and also we needed to get a video out there because people keep asking us what's going on um, so first bit of news there let's take you inside for some other news we have coffee so fellow transporter owners saw our video and that we're asking about coffee to keep us awake at night through the builds and we've had some from these guys Drew Fratelli have sent us some uh, coffee and I've got to say it's good stuff genuinely is we'll need that I'm sure and finally number plates so we uh, mentioned before that we were looking for a new number plate for the vehicle and lots of people suggested number plates and we finally picked the one we wanted to go with we were, this was suggested by a couple of people so uh, if you can go back to however you message us and comment us and just comment again we'll see who you are and we'll sort you out with some free merchandise send you some t-shirts and hats and stuff just to say thank you for helping us find one so the number plate we've gone for is et 6.1 van or et 61 van i thought that was the best one out of all of them lots of cool options but i think that one kind of ticks all the boxes it is an et 6.1 and it's most definitely a van make sure you um keep your eye out for the next video Subscribe to the channel if you don't already, click the little bell uh, to get notifications when we release a new video and hopefully the video, fourth video will come soon with a lot more cutting work and uh, mounting work on the new van. Thanks for watching.